Whoa, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Warrior Live. This is Wednesday night. You didn't know that, but you do know that. Just having fun with you. Because Wednesday nights, we're going to get pumped up in the Word of God. We need the Word. We need the midweek service Word to get pumped up and to get out and witness. Hallelujah. Hey, just a reminder, with Memorial Day coming up, we're having cards made um, that we're going to pass out. And what they are are cards saying, will you pray for America? And most people should say yes. If they say no, just keep walking. <laughs> but most people should say yes. Amen. So uh, we have about a couple hundred of those made. They should be here by Friday, Amen. what I'm told. Amen. And I agree with that, too. Amen. So we've got an exciting weekend coming up, um, Memorial Day. So we got exciting. They'll do the announcements, so you'll be hearing this, too. Got the community breakfast coming up. I'm excited about all that yeah. stuff. That is, that is just people coming in, and we can just love on them and invite them to church. So praise God. Father, we thank you for this service. We thank you for every aspect of it, Father God. We thank you for the preaching of the word. As Pastor Matt brings us forth in power and demonstration, we'll not return void. But Father, we will learn, and we will grow, and we will be charged with the Holy Spirit, with fire in our bones in Jesus' name. So thank you, Father. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Everybody says... Amen. Hmm? Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought I'd just seen him here. Praise God. Amen. So that's the things we have coming up. So um, there's going to be. Also, we're going to do some uh, car shows this year as well. So I hope you all help me out because uh, passing out a track really does not take much energy. You just walk up to somebody. And you say, hey, listen, um, I want you to read this. And in the back of the, of the, 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 yeah, the flyer, come on. There's a prayer. Just pray that prayer. It'll change your life. Amen. So, um, and the cards we're going to pass out at the parade, and they're just cards that says, will you pray for America? And, and that's, that's pretty simple. And I know some of you really love to talk to those. So that if anything opens up in conversation, You'll be doing that, telling them about Jesus. That's what I love. Just best wait for the best year ever in your life, ever in your life on, the, on the track. Um, yeah, Rich, here's, here's what I was trying to say. Pass these out. Um, and um, it says, what will fill the gap? Everybody has a gap. They're all, they want something, and it needs to be filled with Jesus. And on the back, see the prayer in the back? Ask Jesus to forgive, forgive you for your sins. And ask Jesus into your heart. And this will be the greatest year that you ever had, sir, if you pray that prayer. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So that's all I have for announcements. My announcements. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, the praise and worship team, if they don't get here soon, I'm going to sing. Wait a minute. Wait. I, no, you don't understand. I'm going to sing a solo. A solo, you can't hear me. Says the enemy. Let's do it this morning. The praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing Jesus, yes. We sing your name in the dark, and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory, yeah. So let it rise, let praise arise. Let's declare. 
declare it today. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Oh, fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, is around me because nothing stands between me and my God and the fear and the fear that was my prison is no longer where I'm living because nothing stands between me and my God there's no place there's no place I go that he is not where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. We'll be dancing through the darkness, because we believe it. And every stronghold has to break at the name of Jesus. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is Joy cannot be taken. There's nothing stands between me and my God. So I'm looking for Jesus through a veil that's torn to pieces. There's nothing stands between me and my God. Oh, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. We'll be dancing through the darkness And we believe in That a stronghold has to break At the name of Jesus Where the Spirit of the Lord is There's freedom Watch the lies Watch the lies break off Watch the enemy flee Let them flee Watch the walls come crumbling down when the people of God sing. Hear the heavenly roar of every heart set free. Hear the chains of shame hit the ground when the people of God sing. Watch the lies break off. Watch the enemy flee. Watch the walls come crumbling down when the people of God sing. I hear the heavenly roar of every heart set free. I hear the chains of shame hit the ground when the people of God say, Where the Spirit of the Lord is, and there is freedom. We'll be dancing, we'll be dancing through the darkness, because we believe it. And every stronghold has to break at the name of Jesus. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, oh, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. We'll be dancing, we'll be dancing through the darkness, because we believe in. The stronghold has to break the name of Jesus. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. There's freedom, there's freedom. Thank you, Lord, for freeing us tonight. Whom the Son, Jesus, has set free is free indeed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, thank you, Lord. No longer bound. Say it with me. I'm free from the power of sin. Amen. Your blood, 
Your blood speaks a better word. 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 Your love speaks a better word. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Where are your accusers now? Where are your accusers now? There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Where are your accusers now? Shed blood speaks a better word. Your blood speaks a better word. Your love speaks a better word. Your blood speaks a better word. Your say one more time. Your blood, your blood speaks a better word. Your love speaks a better word. Your blood speaks a better word. Your love speaks a better word. There's therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Where are your accusers now? Where are your accusers now? There's therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Where are your accusers now? Where with the mighty hand and an outstretched arm, you are the God who saves. He never wrote your name. With the mighty hand and an outstretched arm, you are the God who saves. He never wrote your name. By you, Jesus, can one be saved? We sing it out. Salvation belongs to the Lord. 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 Salvation belongs to the. We declare, we declare salvation. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, the mighty hand, you are the God who saves, Lord, hallelujah, thank you for your shed blood on Calvary, Jesus, to save us, to redeem us, to bring us back into your kingdom, in Jesus' name. I just encourage everybody here tonight, just press into the, his love endures forever. Great is his faithfulness. He's worthy of our trust. We trust you, Lord. We trust you with our life, Lord. All of our days are yours. In Jesus' name.
Thank you for loving us, Lord, despite all of our mess-ups, Lord. (laughs) 
Your love is never failing, Lord. We just fix our eyes on you tonight, Lord. You run like the prodigal, the father ran when he saw his son. You run towards us. Hallelujah. Thank you for running. For longing to be with us. spoke a word you were singing over me you have been so so good to me before I took a breath you breathed your life in me you have been so so kind to me Love of 
God Oh, he chases me down Fights till I'm found Knees a 99 yourself away Reckless love, Lord. Let's go ahead, church. Just thank him tonight. The reckless love of God. Tearing down the lies tonight, Lord. Tear down the lies, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for your overwhelming love tonight, Lord. Wrap us in your arms. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Father. in your arms tonight. Amen. You may be seated. Whoever's next, come on up for the... We need to take an offering tonight. I was meditating, and uh, it's really a good scripture, and uh, God wants to bless you, but let me read it to you. It's in Malachi 3. Maybe many of you know it. It's to bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And I guess we need that. If you need a, an envelope, you want to raise your hand. That's really good. Isn't that wonderful that he runs after us? Sometimes people don't like us, and yet God likes us. Sometimes we don't like ourselves, but God likes you. He really likes you. <laughs> that's, that's really good. And if he likes you, who are you not to like yourself? You know? Get those thoughts in your head. But I know that he who gives to the poor lends to the Lord. You know, why don't you just... Get those out here and if you uh, bring those ushers and usherettes down here she comes she's an usherette and uh, I really encourage you are we gonna pray for us that's right I guess I need to God I don't know what I'm doing here glory to God well here's the scripture come on over here John I adopted him he's mine Amen. listen to what it says in Proverbs or Malachi 3:10. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. Go ahead, James. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you will not be able to contain. Pour out a blessing. You don't have room. Best thing to do is give, isn't it? You'll have to add on. Yeah, you don't have to add on. Amen. Dear Lord, we just thank you and praise you for these tithes and offerings. We ask them to use them for your glory. Spread the goodness of the gospel. Bless the gift to give her like. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Thank you, Father. Let's sing this. Rain came, the winds blow. Rain came, the wind blew. And my house was built on you. He's never let me down. He's firm foundation the rock on which we stand Lord all other ground is sinking sand Lord thank you Lord yeah Father we do thank you Lord that you are our advocate our ever present help in time of trouble you're the one we can turn to when we're going through a battle and I just feel like if anybody is going through a battle right now or has a prodigal that they're believing God to bring home, I believe God, the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus is more than enough for the request that we have here. So we just pray, I just want to pray into that today. Lord, I just pray that the prodigals come home in Jesus' name. I call you home. This is your season to come home. And I pray, Father God, for any battle that we are facing, Lord. Your name is above all names, and you give us the victory, yes, Father. Lord. We thank you, Lord. We fight from a place of victory to victory, and we already have it because we're more than conquerors. So we just claim that victory right now, and we bring it into our reality in Jesus' name because your pride, you paid for it all, and we want everything that you paid for. We thank you for that. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated, and I'm going to invite Pastor Gail to come and do some announcements, and Daniel too, I guess. Any reason God won't fail? Because you take that word fail, the F refers to being faithful. God's faithful. He's, and uh, he will accomplish what you need in your life. That's what the A is. So he's faithful. He'll accomplish what you need in your life. And he'll intervene in your situation. He's faithful. Everybody say faithful. Accomplish. Intervene. And he'll lead us. Isn't that good news? That's part of, part of meditating God's word. 
picking words and finding words in words. He's faithful, you know? And, uh, but we're glad you're planted in the house of the Lord. You know, when you're in the house of God, the good thing is that you'll flourish in your courts of our God. You'll bear fruit in old age. You'll be fresh and flourishing to declare that God cannot fail. And, uh, and First Corinthians talks about that also. It says God is faithful. He can be trusted. God is dependable. He is reliable. God is true to his word, whether I am or not. But I know I'm finding that if I'm, I need to be true to my word, if I say I'm going to do something, you need to do it. Can I have an amen? You cannot. God is faithful. He does not lie. So if you tell somebody you're going to be there, you're there. Unless death or water comes, you know, you'll be faithful. But we're glad you're first-time guest here tonight. I don't want to be preaching. Pastor Matt's going to be sharing. But we're so glad you're here. If you have, need a packet, fill that out. And we'd like to get you known. We'll be able to pray with you or pray for you as well. If a prayer request, again, going back to God, you can have confidence. First John uh, chapter 5, verse 14. And because it's not necessarily seeing it, sometimes there's a time period. Not always, but you believe God, and it comes to pass. He's faithful. And um, you can call upon him in a day of trouble. We have a church picnic coming up June the 2nd. It's a great time. Invite some people. We're going to pack this place out. I understand they're having spaghetti. If you're not Italian, you can be get 10 Italian juicy spaghetti food. It is good. I'm not Italian, but I love Spanish Italian food. And uh, the other thing it, we have on Friday, we have Power in the Word. You need to come out. That's a great time. We have an opportunity. You share a scripture. We sit around and talk about it. It's awesome. It just really, really is. It's, it's one of the... It's just a great time. That's, that's Friday at 10 a.m. at 11 a.m. A revival prayer. Hey, listen, we need to stand against the forces of darkness. There is a deluded spirit. There is confusion, and there is chaos, and there is lawlessness in our land, and we need to take control of that. We need to bind that force and stand against these forces of darkness. And he says, if my people, and we need to be praying on a regular basis, not just in church. And you're in a car, and you're in a shower. Pray, God, rosso you need to stand against that stuff. That stuff is trying to kill us. We need to stand against it. Amen? Thank you for that. It's true. I mean, and that, that is very, very true. But church picking is coming up, and speaking coming up, here comes Daniel. Come, let's give Daniel a hand. Isn't he a good guy? He is so good. I told him if he ever needed a dad, I could be his dad. I appreciate it. But you're so much better looking than me here. <laughs> I go say, oh. uh, we pray with you. Guys. Okay. Um, so three things real quick, water, pap, water baptism, we're trying to get a couple people signed up for that, so there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer, you can write it down and then we will schedule that, I'm sure, probably for a Sunday morning. Um, men's breakfast is this Saturday at 9 a.m., we're going to be out in the little uh, shack, shed, pavilion that we have, uh, we're going to be cooking again, uh, breakfast, sausage, eggs, pancakes, all the goods, and then... On the 27th is Memorial Day. We're going to be doing a parade. So we are going to be handing out tracks and special cards. Um, we're going to be meeting at the caboose right where the Sitco gas station is at, on, right off of uh, the main avenue, Lawrence Avenue. All right. So those are the announcements. Oh, and also New Brighton as well. I'm not sure exactly where. M Memorial Park is where we're going to be meeting up for that. So see me or... Bob, and we'll get we'll get everybody uh, coordinated across from the fire department in New Brighton, in New Brighton. <laughs> and the caboose in, at the Sitka. All right. So Pastor Matt's going to come. I'll pray. Thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you for allowing us to come into your house to fellowship, to worship, to hear your word. We ask that uh, we listen and we understand and it gets into our spirit. In Jesus name. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, brother. All right. So who was here Sunday for the Pentecost Sunday service? Great. <clears throat> so I went home and I <clears throat> listened to some more uh, podcasts on Pentecost Sunday, and some things that jumped out to me were... Uh, hold on one second. I'm redeemed from allergies, amen? Amen. So uh, some things that stuck out th stood out to me about Pentecost Sunday was that when the Holy Spirit came on Jesus as a form of a dove, that's when he started his miracle ministry. And that's the same kind of thing that happens to us when we receive the Holy Spirit. We, start, we can begin a ministry. 
<clears throat> not that you can't do it before then, but uh, I guess Jesus showed us how to do it. He emptied himself of all his powers to enable us to show us that through the Holy Spirit we can do the same works that he did. That's not saying that you're deity. No. Don't, don't misunderstand that. What it's saying is the Holy Spirit in us equips us to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Can I hear an amen? amen? And the other thing that stood out to me was, you know, if you look at the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation, uh, the Old Testament is kind of like God moving. He, like he appears to Moses in the burning bush. He appears to Moses in the... Uh, for the Ten Commandments. So we have God in the Old Testament primarily on, on the scene. And then in the New Testament Gospels, we have Jesus on the scene, right? And then Acts begins the Holy Spirit is on the scene. So I kind of like liken it to a, uh, a, a race where you pass the baton. Of course, they're all running. The Holy Spirit's active in the Old Testament. Jesus was active in the Old Testament. But they're all running, but one has the baton, so to speak. This is not like, you know, I'm not a, th a theologian, but this is just that some thinking thoughts that I have about it is that God was running in the beginning, passed it on to Jesus. Jesus rescued us from sin and passed it on to the Holy Spirit in us. So we are representing God. We're the body of Christ, right? So Jesus in us, the Holy Spirit in us, allows us to, to continue the race that he set out to do way in the beginning in Genesis. That's us. We are the ones to finish the race. Amen? Amen. And the final thought about uh, Pentecost Sunday and the Holy Spirit, I'm trying to remember it as I stand here, <clears throat> uh, is if it comes to me, I'll try to come back to it. It's not coming to me right now. Lord, help me. <laughs> Pentecost Sunday, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Those two things were good, though. I'll try to remember the other one. It was good, too. So let's just pray. Lord, just help us tonight to uh, dive into your word, Lord, and just be hungry for it. Thank you for perfect recall. Thank you, Lord, for the words from heaven. And Lord, just open every eye and every heart to hear what you would have us to say, Lord. Help us to be alert in our minds and not fall asleep. <laughs> and help us to uh, just become who you want us to become, and continue to be who you called us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. So last month we talked about mindset medicine. You know, I keep thinking of that song. I don't know who sings it, but the, where it says, I got my mind set on you. I got my mind set on you. Yeah, so that's really what God wants to, us to sing that to him. I got my mind set on you. And when you have your mind set on, you, on him, then you can't think about other, other things. If your mind is continually on him, then you can't focus on the gas prices because you're, you're your mind is set on him. Or you can't think about negativity because your mind is set on him. And if he's for you, who can be against you? Amen. So we talked about uh, last month, part one, Proverbs 23, 7 says, For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So since we talked last, I, I was meditating on this some more, and it's really a, a big connection between our head and our heart. And this, whatever this is, a foot, foot length from our head into our heart or spirit is the key to activating the Word of God, right? So you can think about the Word, but you have to think about it till it gets in your heart. Because the verse says it right there, as a man thinketh in his heart... So is he. So if you say over and over again, I'm a dog or I'm a cat, you're never going to really believe it, really, because, you, you know, you're not a, you're not a, you don't even look like a dog or a cat. So it's not about saying something over and over again until you believe it. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about speaking the word and reading the word, meditating the word until it becomes alive in you. The word rhema means the spoken word. Or if you say rhema word, we're talking about something that's in the Bible that becomes alive to you. It's more than just words on a page. It's, it's actually a living 
something that's activated in, in you. And that's really the difference between someone who believes something and someone who believes it in their heart. It's a rhema word. It's a rhema word. It, it's come, it comes alive in you. And the only way to do that, you might already know this, but the only way to make it come alive in you is by meditating on it all the time. Like a cow. <laughs> I think they have like three stomachs, and they eat something that goes down to the stomach one, then they bring it back up, chew it some more, bring it back to the stomach two, bring it back, chew it some more. Can you imagine? Thank God we don't have to do that. But chewing on the word is actually healthy for you. And, and bringing it back up and, ah, oh, yeah, as a man thinketh in his heart. So I think about it till it gets in my heart. That's when I become, it becomes a living thing in me. Amen? And you could just, you could just preach on a verse just by meditating on it. You could preach on this for probably weeks. So is he. <laughs> and see yourself as being the kingdom of God on this earth. If we just keep our eyes and our mouth and our mind fixed on him, we will begin, we'll begin to operate in his kingdom business automatically. It'll just come out. So we talked about Romans 12 too. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So if you don't transform your mind, you're going to automatically be conformed to think and be and behave and think and act like the world. And we talked about our, our, our minds are amazing. If you get an injury in your brain, a car accident or something, and you, and you lose, you know, it's injured, so you can't speak or you can't move a part of your body, you can actually develop a different part of your body to, to speak and, and move that arm that couldn't move. You can actually develop a different part of your body to do that. The word is neuroplasticity, and it's an amazing thing that our, our mind can create new highways. So we're going to watch this video. It's like, it's like a four-minute video where it talks about this concept that, you know, say you, you were brought up to think a certain way, you know. Don't ever leave any food on your plate or whatever it is. Whatever thoughts that you were brought up with, you know. Don't waste, then you won't want or some, whatever that is. Waste not, want not. But all these thoughts that we have in our brain doesn't mean they're actually God's thoughts. He had so many baskets left over. I'm sure some of, them, some of it might have went bad and they had to throw it away. Who knows? <laughs> so this, this video is about how we can develop a, a better part of our brain. Maybe we have a, maybe we have a, a weakness for something, you know. Maybe it's sugar. Maybe it's uh, being lazy. And your mind always says to yourself when you get stressed, just lay down and go to sleep. <laughs> but you're always stressed, so that means you're always going to sleep, which is not a great life because you're just sleeping your life away because you're stressed. So you, anyways, but you have to create a new, new highway, and, and you, you press in through that stress, and you, and you lean into the Lord, and you do it afraid, so to speak. You kind of do it even despite your feelings. And you put one step in front of the other and you say, I'm going to do this because I know I'm called to do it, whether I feel like it or not. I, I, I have this desire to fulfill this calling on my life. So I hope this is making sense, but if you have a weakness and it's a major highway in your brain, it's always your go-to comfort, sugar, whatever it is, drinking, smoking, whatever, that's a major highway that's, that you go to. Well, you can actually tear that highway down with the Word of God, and you can build a new highway. That's, that's your go-to. I'm going to go to nothing is impossible with the Lord. Amen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Uh, by his stripes, I am healed. I'm not going to live in pain for the rest of my life. And that's your new highway. It's not, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, not, afraid, I'm not afraid anymore. That, that's my old highway. My new highway is I trust in God. That's my go-to thought when I'm stressed. So let's, let's watch this video and see if it'll help us. 
The Bible tells us we should control our thoughts and renew our minds. Well, many of us find that very challenging. On this week's Healthy Living, addiction specialist Dr. Alan Weissenbacher, author of The Brain Change Program, talks about the concept of neuroplasticity as a starting point. Based upon what you choose and what you think about, and the way I would describe it to my addicts in recovery is that their brain consists of super highways or little paths. The super highways are those paths that you use the most often and they've become the strongest. And for a particular individual, that might be anger, that might be lust, that might be alcohol. Uh, whatever they have been doing a lot of, that creates the super highway. And so whenever life throws you a curveball or you feel stressed, the brain wants to take the biggest highway, and that could be the alcohol. And so it's going to take a lot of work to switch to a little path of sobriety that's unused, small. But I tell people the encouraging thing is every time you actively move your brain from this highway of, say, alcohol to the, path, the small path, you take one brick off the highway and put it on the, on the path. You might need to do this 60 times a minute to start. But every time you move a brick, then you might only have to do it 30 times, then maybe only once every five minutes. It gets easier as you do this brain construction project, dismantling the big stuff and building up the small stuff so that it becomes big and the replacement. When you look at the addicts that you have counseled over the years, what do the winners choose and what do the people who never break their addictions, what's the difference? Uh, at the the core of it is to get at what, are, what is the root issue that is causing the addiction. Uh, whatever pain, whatever difficulties, whatever worries, anxieties, whatever past experiences or trauma is down deep, that's the root, and then the addiction is the weed, the leaves. Uh, you can try to pick the leaves, but it'll still keep growing back. And so really need to bring that deep pain, whatever it is, out into the light for healing. So do that first, work on that healing, and then the habits in the brain. Uh, the brain wants to take its path, the big pathways. And as you're getting healed, then to begin to dismantle the automatic behaviors, forget willpower. Willpower doesn't work. I tell a client, if you're sitting there thinking, must not use alcohol, must not use alcohol. What are you thinking about? Alcohol. And what pathway in your brain is getting stronger? The alcohol. And so you're making it worse for yourself in the very act of saying, don't do it, don't do it. And so I tell people what you need to do is don't resist using willpower, instead replace. Focus on something good, focus on something beneficial. If you're starting to feel some kind of craving, don't try to like, must not, get yourself involved in something good. We would take addicts to Juarez, Mexico to work on building orphanages. People are saying, are you crazy? You're taking addicts to that area? And we never had a problem. Why? Because they were focused on building that orphanage. They were doing good. All right, that's good right there. Thank you. So like I said, if, you're, if you set your affection on him, set, got, got my mind set on him, then you really can't focus on sugar <laughs> or being lazy or talking bad about people. You, you don't have time to gossip because you're, you're too busy thinking about Jesus and not your neighbor, right? So really, this, we do have to live in this world, but we don't have to be of this world. Amen. We, can, we can live in the spirit. Believe it or not, we can live in the spirit all the time. So I want to deal with, in closing, uh, my second point, which is what lies are you believing that is affecting your health and your outlook on life? So as a, as a young person, I used to have, I had all these lies I believed about myself, you know. And I actually had to go to a professional counselor maybe seven or eight years ago, and he, he looked at me and, and, and said to me, that is, I would have never thought that about you. I, I would never even no notice that about you. Because I said, whenever people look at me, they notice this about me. And he's like, no, I never even would have noticed. So 
It takes, sometimes it takes like a, a hammer on your head, but so many things that we believe about ourselves that aren't true. Amen. They're lies. Amen. Amen. And what is that doing? That's destroying us from the inside because if we're really believing the devil's lies, which is taking away our confidence, which is uh, not allowing us to embrace the truth in his word, then we're short-circuiting what he wants to do in our lives. This uh, philosopher said, when we accept a lie, we begin to lose the ability to discern truth. Think about that. When we accept a lie about ourselves or a lie about life, you know, everybody's against me or uh, nobody understands me, you know, the, the stupid things that we sometimes think, we begin to lose the ability to discern truth, to discern truth. So you can look at something and say, I want to believe that, but I just can't because this is what I believe. It's, it's what I have chosen to believe. Well, you believe in a lie and you're not able to, for one thing, you can't accept the truth. So I had to come to a place where I, even though I still felt a certain way about myself, I had to tell myself, no, you might feel that way, but that's a lie because God says this and that is the truth. Yep. Say it with me. I might believe this, might believe this about, myself, about myself, but it's a lie. It's a lie. And, God and God speaks truth, speaks so I have to believe what he says, what he says. despite what I feel. What I feel. It's, it's such a big point, because so many times we go through our day feeling stuck or feeling this is how I am, everybody thinks I'm this or that or all this negative stuff, and it's not true. Even if you feel that, it's not true. We weaken our character and diminish the quality of our lives when we, when we believe lies about ourselves. Romans 8.31 says, If God is for us, who can be against us? The truth is, no matter what, who is against you or speaks evil about you, it doesn't matter. Because it says it right here in Romans 8.31, if God is for us, who can be against you? So it means this, who can really push against you when he's for you? So people might be against you, but they, nothing is going to affect you. And they really can't change your outcome because God is for you. Amen. So who cares about people? pushing, trying to push against you because God's for you. He's the one pulling you. <clears throat> you guys getting this? So what if, you're, what if you're lying to yourself about something day after day? You have 50,000 thoughts a day and 95% of those thoughts are on repeat. So, so imagine that's why we have so much mental illness today in our societies because it's on repeat. You know, you're ugly or you can't do anything right. And it's every 50,000 times a day on repeat. You know, <laughs> don't, you know, all this crazy stuff, all this crazy stuff, everything you touch, you, you break. Whatever, whatever the lies you believe, you can't fix anything or uh, nobody likes you or you don't have any friends or all of that are lies. Why? Because if God is for you, he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And a man that shows himself friendly will have friends. Amen. Amen. So under this believing lies thing, in closing, meditating on the word of God night and day and day and night keeps your mind stayed on Jesus and it's the only way to discern truth from a lie. So we look at the world and we, we see everything is flip-flopped, you know? If, if, this is, if this is truth and this is false, the world has, every, has everything flipped because they believe lies. Let's take care of everybody who has needs. That sounds good. <laughs> that sounds good. Let's, let's just charge money and take care of the poor and that sounds good, but if the Bible says if you don't work, you're not supposed to eat. Yeah. So that's the truth. That's the truth. So it's not, it's, it's the world that says take care, you know. So the whole thing is flipped. The whole thing is flipped. We can, we can, we can out, 
outwardly, you know, protest against these people. But over here, we just have to say, God bless you. <laughs> it's all flip-flopped. So here's some verses to, to end with tonight. Uh, Isaiah 26, 3, it's number 7 on the outline. You will keep us in perfect peace, all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Say it with me. Thoughts fixed on you. Yeah. It's never a waste of time to think God's thoughts. And it's never wasted time to pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Holy Spirit. John 14, 27, towards the middle there, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. So that's telling you. There's trouble all around us. There's trouble everywhere. But it's your job to not let your heart be troubled. It's your job. To not let it. Ephesians 3.13, I'll close with this. Make every effort to keep yourself united in the Spirit, binding yourself together with peace. Verse 13. Let's kind of jump in the 10 verses. This will continue until all we all come to such a unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Now this, this verse to me sounds like we're walking in the Spirit and we're bringing God's kingdom wherever we go. Is that what you, would, would you agree with that? Let me, let me read it again. Continue in this every effort to keep yourself united with God, the Holy Spirit. Binding yourself together with the Holy Spirit. And then what's going to happen in verse 13? Such a unity in the faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature, measuring to the full and complete standard of Christ. Standard of Christ? The full and complete standard of Christ? I wrote this down. You might want to write this down, but this was a, something I wrote down last night. A fixed heart will function on a fuller level in God. And we will discern in our spirit what is God and what is not God. A fixed heart will function on a higher level in God. And we will be able to discern what is God and what is not God. It's pretty simple to bring it down to layman's terms. terms. You walk with the Holy Spirit and he'll tell you this is good, this is bad. Don't go here, go there. Stay away from that. Run after that. And you wonder why everything's just working well for you. It's because you're walking in the Spirit and you're walking in complete standard of Christ. 14, then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown around by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. We're going to stop right there. The devil says stuff that sounds like the truth. And the only way to recognize it is by unity with the Holy Spirit and, and fixing your eyes on the Word of God. You know, and <clears throat> you guys can stand or whatever. I'm going to close here in a second. But in uh, all through all through school, I was in school for 14 years, uh, two years of kindergarten and 12 years of grade school and high school. And so for 14 years, every day at this Christian school I went to, we said the pledge to the Bible. It's kind of a cool pledge. You want to read? You want to do it with me tonight? Let's stand up and let's do it. It goes like this: I pledge allegiance to the Bible. That's it. Let's do it together. I pledge allegiance to the Bible. I'll say it and then you repeat. God's holy word. I will make it a lamp. We would, we would hold it like this or something. I, I think we would hold it with our hand on it. Unto my feet and a light unto my path. 
and will hide its word in my heart that I might not sin against God. You remember that? Yeah, so that's actually a scripture. In Psalms 119.11, it says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So it's getting it from our head to our heart. Make it a new pathway where it's, it's our go-to, and then our heart speaks it out, and it, and it activates God's kingdom in our situation. This is, this is not mind over matter. This is renewing your mind so it affects your beliefs, and then you speak it out, it becomes a rhema word, and it changes your situation. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. So God, tonight we thank you for your word that it changes us from the inside out. It changes our thinking. It changes our heart. It changes our faith level. And Lord, we embrace your truth. All other ground is sinking sand, Lord. We embrace your word tonight. It is life and health to all of our flesh. And I just thank you for bringing health to every person who listens and watches and takes this word and does it, Lord. Let it not fall on thorny, thorny grounds where the cares of this life choke it out and we're, we're overcome by worry and care. Lord, we just trust you and we rely upon you Amen. and we go full throttle for you in these last days. And Jesus, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Have a great night. You're dismissed. Yes, yes.